in high school and it was really terrible there came a time where my husband slept in a toilet okay let me give it a try and by the way guys hi guys how are you doing hoping you're doing fine welcome to real ruth where we lifestyle we clean and we motherhood to support my channel Kindly subscribe if you haven't, like this video, share me out and also drop a comment in the comment section. And yes guys, you can also join my membership by tapping the word joining down here. It's really affordable and I really appreciate. So welcome to yet another vlog guys. And today I'm going to do it differently. Yeah, I've been praying and waiting for this day and I think today is the day that I'm going to let everything out of the bag guys forgive me the cold here is unforgiving and i just had to wear this jacket here yeah just to make myself warm yeah and so so guys what happened is today I share with you my story it's a very heartbreaking story a very inspire inspirational story a very motivating story our love story and i hope you stay around till the end and if you enjoyed this video drop a comment in the comment section and if you need part two of this of course my story is so big yeah uh if i decide to share it in one bit it will be a novel yes if you are interested or if you want to know more about it you can just drop a comment in the comment section so that i can do part two of it so guys yes i'm a mom i stay at home mom currently i'm a stay at home mom i sometimes work but not daily i'm a mom of three beautiful girls and i'm a wife to one husband so guys here comes my story i just want to tell you how we met and how things have been from gray from grass to grace where god has like where god took us from exactly yeah, where god took us from and where we are right now so guys this is going to be interesting you don't want to miss this guys i met my hubby in high school uh, we were both in Form 3, if I remember so well, we were both in Form 3. Their school was our neighboring school. Yeah, we my school was girls' school and theirs was boys' school. It was not, was it mixed? It was a mixed school, yeah. Their school was a mixed school, mine was girls' school. So, I remember they came to watch set books, yeah, have dramas and all those. So, they came to watch set books in our school, but they were so, so neighbors. So they came and then this man saw me. I don't know what he meant her to, to seduce me. Maybe if he was here, he would have told you more about that. And that's why I've said, if you want part two of it, I can do it with him. That is if he'll be available. So they came to watch said books and then this man seduced me and I was like, okay, let me give it a trial guys. And of course I gave it a trial. Our, our, our relationship in high school was so good, you know, but we could not like meet daily. We were meeting when we were on half terms, when we closed schools and all those stuff. But when we were school, unless there were activities that can put us together, but we, when we were in school, we could only meet when we close or we were on mid terms or half terms i can put at that i can put it that way so guys we started dating form three form four and then we did our kcse examination and then i was like now uh we are done with school he's gone i'm gone i don't know even her place he don't know my place so there's no way we will meet again. I was like, this relationship is done and done for good, you know. And by the way, high school or school relationship, especially high school, it does not have like a lot of things because when will you even meet? It's just that you have a boyfriend, you have a girlfriend, and that is it. When we, we did our KCSE examination, I was like, oh, this relationship is done. I'm done for good. He's gone, I'm gone. We'll never meet again. Guys, little did I know that his uncle was my neighbor, our neighbor. Yeah, and it happened that after KCSE, uh, within a period of like two, was it three to one month, he came to stay with his uncle. So he came to take 
care of the farmland because they had a very huge plantation of maize so he came to stay there like take care of everything you know guys do, doing all those chores and then yeah we again reconciled we again renewed our relationship and then i was like okay let's continue and by that time i was learning computer packages in um nearest center there in the village so I could like I was going to school at 8 a.m. and then I was coming back home for lunch but now I couldn't go to my mom's place for lunch like from school or from the computer session I will go direct to his place I go there I make food for him I wash clothes for him I wash utensils I clean the house and then I go back to class guys that is how serious our relationship was so guys we dated we dated we never we did not date for that long and then uh, after a few months I now had to join a TTI I went and studied for sales and marketing and then he went to 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 learn how to drive driving he went in for driving lessons as i went for tti because i studied sales and marketing yes guys. so i went to college and he also went to college but for me i was staying in school for him he was um day schooling i don't know in college if it's called day schooling but he was going in for driving lessons and then he go back he goes back to his place so guys it happened that we couldn't like we couldn't spend weekends away from each other. Every weekend we happened to go out for for vacation. Is it a vacation? Yes. We could go out every weekend. Like from Friday evening, he comes, he picks me up, and then he brings me back on Sunday. That is what was happening. And the whole process was nice. The whole process, I enjoyed every bit of it. And then I came to realize that this is the man that I really want for, for myself. Because first of all, uh, I was not a material girl, uh, to be precise. I don't know, but that one we can hear from him. But for me, to my knowledge, I was not into material that much. But some he did something that made me realize that this is the man that I want to be for the rest of my life. You know, when it comes to marriage, it's a full-time contract. Like, if you sign that contract, you have signed it, you have signed it, unless otherwise. But when you enter into marriage, know that it's a full-time contract. And then marriage is something that you sign a certificate before like starting the journey it's not like education you know education you have to go through all those steps study learn and then at the end of the of it or at the end you will have to graduate and then you own a certificate but when it comes to marriage guys you get a certificate before like seriously if you want if you want to be you know sometimes someone people can take you for granted like someone is like come we stay uh, you you go you you get married for one month and then you move out but if you want to know that someone is serious with you sometimes you just have to like sign those documents first before you start the journey of marriage so that is the funny thing with marriage so for us we we dated and yeah he did something that made me to realize that this is the man that i want to be or i would like to be to spend the rest of my life with him so guys you can imagine this is like a hundred years 200 years together you can imagine so if you make a wrong choice it's like you have made a lifetime wrong choice guys so when you want to venture into marriage or you want to get married or marry, you must make sure that you make the right decision, guys. So, there's this day, even before I joined college, he bought me a phone. My first phone, actually, he's the one who bought for me. It was a very, very big phone, but it was a um, button, button phone. Uh, that time, I never knew that there are screen touches or smartphone and all those stuff. So he bought me a phone and a phone that phone came with credit worthy 60 bob Kenyan shillings. Yeah, and I was like, okay, 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 okay. It's not that I needed it. Even I never requested for it, but you know, sometimes you just think that you need to talk to this girl, you need to be communicating each and every day. And I was before that I was using my mom's phone, and you know, it's already restricted, you know, like 
anaweka credit ana anaweka as in my mom used to 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 load her phone like with 10 shillings and then he used to load her phone when he when she wants to call someone so you could rarely get her phone with credit so that's why he decided to get me a phone with credit so he could provide for me credit every day you know guys and my phone was ever on vibration when i'm at home like and then i could like keep it here or I have those, uh, you know, there are those bikers that have pockets, so you could keep your phone there, and then it's on vibration. When he calls, you like go to we go to the toilet or latrine to go and talk to him, and then you're like, hi, say, say ma, hey, you are like whispering. You don't want your parents to to see you or to get you. So that one aside. So and then another thing that he did that like just baffled me away was. Uh, he gave me 2,000 Kenyan shillings to go and get clothes. He was like, he was so precise. Go get yourself clothes, those clothes that you need. And then I was like, clothes, I'm still in my mother's house. Of course, they will ask, where are you getting the money? I'm not yet working uh, and they have not given me. So they will be like, where are you getting the cash to? Where are you getting the money to buy clothes? So I was wise enough. And one thing that I did was I went to the market and then I bought inner wears, the bras and then the pants. And that time I remember there were these pants which were called hot pants. Yeah, I bought them. I bought several worthy 2K, 2,000 Kenyan shillings. Yeah, that is what I did with the money. And then we dated that now we were um in college and he's learning his driving driving lessons and then when he was done because i think for him it was only for six months and then for me it was was it one year yeah for me it was one year it was certificate it was one year so this this time i was i now i started doing i started my papers my exam and then i realized that i'm pregnant what this was the hardest, as it was the hardest part of my life, realizing that I'm pregnant, I'm still in school, I'm not working, I still depend on my parents, the father-to-be is also not working, he's still under his parents' control and all those, I was like, now what will happen? That, that was the very, very difficult part for me. And remember, guys, I was, I was doing my exam and I was like, now you know when you are finished with the exam you we were to because it was certificate so i was supposed to finish my exam i go back home and then i come after one month to continue with the diploma you know guys so i was like what will happen what will become of me i'm now pregnant although i i i just i I was grateful because I was doing my exam and then I was like, what if it could have happened when um, I've not yet done my exam, you know? And then I remember calling him and then I was like, oh, hi. Hey, that time, I cannot remember the name that we used to call each other, but I was like, hi, okay. Mm, uh, there's something I want to tell you. Uh, blah, 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 and I'm pregnant and then he was like to him he was so happy he felt so happy i felt the happiness through the phone because we were talking and i remember it was at night we were talking on phone and i felt that happiness he was like he was happy and then i was like why are you happy why are you happy for i'm still in school you're not working how will we take care of the child i cannot go back to my parents when i'm pregnant and now all those questions i was asking myself but I just felt the happiness that was within him when I was like giving him the information. And so he was like, okay, can we get married? And then we get married and then where are we going? Where will we go to? Where are we, where, are we, where are we going to stay? How will we survive? You know, now the baby is involved. How, how are we going to survive this? And then I was like, hmm, how are we going to survive? He was so, so serious. He wants us to get married. And then I, I told him, okay, let me finish my exam because I was remaining with three papers. Let me finish my papers and then we move. 
I even I did not even ask him where are we going, what will happen, how will we like break the information to our parents. You know, my parents know that I'm I'm in school and I cannot ba go back to them to my parents. Although the pregnancy had not like it was unseen, you know. I think it was three three months. But you know, pregnancy three months, you know what happens, like you cannot even hide it because we'll be we will be throwing everywhere, you will have molds, you don't want to eat this, you want this, you have molds, you know. And our parents are so keen when it comes to pregnancy. They can even know when you are even noted, like when you are one month old, they can tell you you are pregnant. So we planned ourselves so well and then I, after, finish, after I had finished my exam, I went to stay with his sister. I stayed with his sister for a while. When I was now, my pregnancy was four months old, I was like... By the way, guys, I got um, severe typhoid. I was so sick, terrible, so sick. So I decided to go back to my parents just to humble myself because it, ha it has happened. What will I do? I cannot do anything. So I decided I went back to my parents. I explained everything. And then they were like, you know, parents are just parents. They will just like welcome you. <laughs> Even if they will feel so bad, you have disappointed them, you have failed them. But... Anyway, they will just have to welcome you and embrace you because now what will you do? So I went back to my parents and then I nursed my pregnancy. It was so, so bad. Expe the experience was so bad. And, the, and again, it was my first pregnancy, guys, you can imagine. First pregnancy with bad experience. You were, you were like, what did I do to deserve this? What did I do to deserve? But I just had to like... Because I couldn't do anything about it. Now, when I went back to my parents, my hubby, um, I decided to go and look for greener pastures. Because now staying with his sister would not help. He decided to, to fly to Nairobi to look for green pasture. And back in Nairobi, he had no idea to where he was going to stay, like sincerely speaking. But he had friends because he had... He had stayed there for with his aunt for quite some time, so he knew little friend that would like accommodate him because he did not want also to go to to his relatives to be a burden there. And then the first place where he landed is he went to stay with his friend. Now what they were doing is they were doing this Mjengo thing, building and construction. Like now my my hubby does not know anything about building and construction. We call them what we call no, like you'll be a fundis assistant or you'll be an assistant to um what are they called to an engineer or that person who builds or who constructs a house. I know guys are getting me. So he came, he tried, he tried, he tried, and then he met someone who introduced him to to sales and marketing. Like you go in a company, you are given cups, you are given flask, you are given pots to go sell. If you sell, you are paid on commission. So from where he was staying to town, it was a hundred bob. And then to Westlands, he was hawking most of the, time, the, the things at Westlands, now from Langata to Westland. And then it was really, he really sold. He could not like get customers. And then he was like, let me just leave it and venture into something else. Now, when he stopped that thing is when the friend threw him away. Yes, guys. His friend told him, it's enough. I cannot keep accommodating you. You are a man enough to go and rent your own house, stand on your own. I cannot accommodate you any longer. Because that, that friend was the one who was paying the rent, who was buying food. My hubby was literally doing nothing, you know. He was so desperate, guys. And then, um, that day he he was he was he was thrown out. He called me. I remember very very well. It was two a.m. at night, and then he was like, "Hey, Mimi, I've been thrown out of the house." And then I was like, "Now, where are you?" He told me, "Um, I've just gone to a shop." Um. At the corridor, you know, shops normally have the, the, the corridors out there. So she told me I'm there and I want to sleep there. Uh, and, and then I was like, why have you chosen there? He was like, here we have this light, we have the security, you know. At the market, the, there's normally light. You know, you can just maybe sit there till morning and no one will ask you anything. So 
I was like, okay. And then he, he, he slept there at the shop for two days and then he decided i'll not be continue i will not continue coming to stand here up to morning i would rather go and sleep in a toilet yes so he went back to where they were staying and where he was thrown away he he, he went there at night and then he just decided to go to the toilet you know there were a toilet and then a bathroom so he went into a bathroom to sleep there he laid his head on um, a, a bag of cement and then after three days after three days of sleeping in the toilet and no one knew about that it's only that god 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 decided to rescue him you know god does does not disown his people uh certain nights someone just from the same 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 plot or same area went to ease himself at night and then instead of that person going to the to ease himself in the toilet he went to ease himself in the bathroom and then he found my husband there sleeping there and then he was like what why he told him come i'll accommodate you until you will be you will you'll be able to stand on your own and that's how yeah he continued to survive under another friend with uh, lots of prayers that he would not be thrown away someday or sometime so he continued to hustle and then after like after um, after four months now i was i i was i had finished four months my baby was now four months and remember he did nothing we did nothing like ile shopping unaendanga you do a shopping for your baby before he or she is born for me for my first born never did that my mother just bought a few rompers for me and then pampas not even pampas nap nappies napkins just to cover the baby after he or she she was born so within a period of four months my hubby got a uh, met a person who gave him a contract of digging digging toilets digging holes digging manuals any hole yeah and by that time it was really paying good so he went he has never like dug a hole has never done that job he has never even entered a hole deep deep down and you can imagine how deep is a latrine hole you know guys it's very deep sorry so he just accepted for the sake of the baby even he told me i'm accepting to do this job for the sake of that baby because the baby even doesn't have clothes doesn't have blankets doesn't have like baby essentials it was so so terrible and i did not want to stress my parents so he did that job and i thank god because he was paid well well and then he came he came for me he did i remember he told me i'm going to mudurwa to get baby stars and blah 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 and then i'll be coming to see my baby girl so he came, he brought all those nice things, and then I was like, oh God, thank you. I was so happy, you know, I was so happy seeing him alive after all those struggles, after sleep, after days and months of sleeping on an empty stomach. You are a man, you are, you are doing hard jobs, and yet you are sleeping on empty stomachs, or sleeping in cold, you know, guys, it was that, that terrible. So to cut the long story short, he came he picked me he came he brought the stuffs and then he came back and then he came back for me after a period of one month <laughs> yeah now i joined him here at nairobi guys and that is when everything was like everything was scattering everything was so bad you know i had the baby i can barely eat because i remember the foods we were eating was indomie and uh, so soya i don't know you guys if you know something called sosi soya and even nowadays when you give me indomie or sosi soya i cannot eat them because i ate i ate and ate and ate have you ever eaten something and then you feel like ah, it's enough yeah that is the only like it was the only staple food in our house and we re we we were renting a house which was 1300 and we could barely pay it we could like stay for three months four months we have not paid because no job my hubby could go out in the evening he comes back with nothing so terrible and i i told myself let me just have a little patience because i don't know where god is taking us i decided to start this journey with him and i cannot leave him alone i'm going to stand with him no matter what 
So there's a day our landlady came and he was like, you guys are not paying the rent, just get out. I don't want even your money. I remember we had like two, we had 3K and then he was like, she, she. that landlady was a uh, she. So she was like, I don't need your money, just get out of my house. And then he were like, now where are we going? But by good luck, my hubby had a friend who... He told us, come here, my landlady. And we thank God because we were just meeting landladies. My landlady is good. He will understand. She will understand you. So we went there and then we called the landlady. She came, we talked to him. And then she just, she told us, I'm doing this for the sake of the child. You know, like sometimes children are just angels. Like my baby was just an angel. Because sometimes someone will just bring food to us and then they were like, I'm doing this because of the baby, you know. Not because of me or my hubby, but because of the baby. You know, sometimes, even not sometimes, babies are just angels. You can like get money because of the baby. You can have food because of the baby, you know. For us adults, of course, you can sleep on empty stomachs. But for the babies, just God provides for them. So that is how we found ourselves into another house uh, it was worthy 1700 but at least we could afford now my hubby was getting contracts to dig the holes by that time he was doing contracts for digging holes digging manuals septics any hole he was doing that job and then we hustled we hustled and then 2014 of course i came i joined my husband the year 2013 my baby was Four months it was the month of april it, that's when i joined him so 2014 god started smiling on us we could now eat like even we could now even drink fresh water you know here in our place we have salt water so if you need fresh water you buy and it was it's expensive 20 liter cost for 30 bob and then the other one which is salty you can even buy 20 liter for two bob you know so we started at least drinking fresh water, like we can eat rice, we can eat meat, we can eat like good food, you know, guys. So 2014, God started smiling on us and we stayed in the house for one good year. That is the whole of 2014. Yeah, we could afford milk, we could eat, we could drink mm, milk, tea. We could like eat meat, we could eat bread with margarine or blue band or or jam, zester, all those good things. God started smiling on us and through doing what? Through digging holes, guys, that is what I'm saying. Through digging holes, it's, it's not that he now got a very good job. So it was through digging holes and digging all those all those shimos that is now God started smiling on us and then one day one time he met someone who is in government who is in government he gave him a, a very a big job he paid him so well and then he did it on a contract so the payment was just good and then he managed to buy a motorbike or motorcycle yeah he managed to buy a motorcycle and then he was doing that that rider thing from stage to stage and then he did not even do it for long because god just god just decided to smile on us god loved us so much and then there's a day he met um an engineer who introduced him to building and construction things properly being um foreman and all those stuff he accepted to take him through the process without even paying a coin and then that is why he ventured himself. That's how he found himself into building and construction stuffs, engineering, being foreman, project drawing, project organizing, and all doing all those things. And then he, we, we felt like now we are living, we are alive, we are strong, we are good. And then that's when we managed to buy our first, our first vehicle which was um uh what is it called this car what is it called fsr that is a lorry to like this cars that carry sand carry stones for building we bought that our first car um, through a loan and guys i will just give you a story on that because that is just a story aside it was terrible we had sleepless night loan getting a vehicle or getting an asset 
through loan is just stressful that is a story for another day and then that car we failed to pay because it was we were supposed to be paying for 46,000 kenyan shillings monthly for the loan and ingetoka wapi because sometimes you know when it comes to juakali today you have 10 million tomorrow you have 10k the, the next day you have 1000 the other day you have nothing so it's uh you can wake up today you have money tomorrow you don't have you know that is how it goes with our work that we are doing even currently now so it was the auctioneers came for it they took it they went they sold it and it was it went like that and then after sometimes my hubby you know my hubby is that person who never gives up he likes pushing things and he never gives up easily he went in to buy a um, private car for taxi to uh by the way we were to put it into uber but we did not like we did not manage to do so even it it was also on loan so for that one we were to pay twenty six thousand kenya shillings monthly but you know not everyone wants to be to be carried by a uber you know with that price and all those stuff so it was also auctioned yeah it was also auctioned mm, they came they took it and then we were like oh watch out watch another stories alone and that's how we dropped like going borrowing for money to buy assets we told ourselves we are not going to do those business because now when they took the our um, private car i was pregnant with my second born guys i was so i was like this because of the stress it was really so bad so we told ourselves let's just work hard and god will provide other means of yeah god will provide other things and then uh, we continued and we uh, with prayers and everything things just worked out on the things just worked out by themselves and then 2015 we found ourselves renting a um, self-contained apartment this one yeah we rented this apartment uh first of all when we went there we went into a one bedroom apartment and then after some times we went into um uh, at the same within the same apartment we entered in uh, it because it was um bed sitter some some rooms were bed sitter another rooms were um, one bedroom and another one were two bedroom you know but this the same apartment it it has it had all those compartments so you could just go for the one you can afford so when we went we went there we went into a bed sitter and then after some few months we moved into um one bedroom and then after a few months we moved into a two bedroom compartment guys and we stayed there for five plus good years we stayed there five plus good years though also re paying rent was not that we could not like afford it on time even there's a time they came they they locked they locked our house you know all those things and then we were just like god will just make a way guys and it happened that we managed to construct our own home this is also another story on its own i shared on how we constructed our own house with on a low budget i'm just going to leave the link in the description box so that you can watch it and also get motivated guys so nothing is impossible let me just finish this story because i don't want it to be too long nothing is impossible before god guys you can always you will always start somewhere and for for you to know that you are growing you must start like you must start downwards going up you know we always have ladders and ladders have steps like step one two three like that so nothing is impossible there's no situation that is scheduled for you that this one is for you that this problem is for you that will have to carry it for years even if you'll carry it for years sincerely speaking it will come to an end and always in the tunnel we have darkness but at the end of it we have light so what you have to do is just exercise some patience and everything will work out for your own goodness yes guys so that is my little story guys and if you want more of it you can comment down below so can i can bring part two and that's how we now we we are in our own house our own mansion we are just like we are a small family who are trying to bring out the best from 
from themselves we are just trying to create the best out of ourselves and making sure that we are living the life that we wanted when we were dating because you know you are like i want this kind of life i want to own this i want to have this i want to have freedom in my own house and that is what we are just doing right here so guys what do you have to say about my story in the comment section you can also share a bit of your story and also follow me on instagram at arumkoya that's where i normally engage my audience and my fans more thank you so much guys for watching till here if you have watched till this far i really appreciate you so much and may god bless you until my next video bye bye